Hello everyone, how are you? Good morning. I hope you're all keeping well wherever you're coming in from the world. Um, it's lovely to be here. I'm in the National Concert Hall in the John Field Room and uh, it's a real buzz to get out of the house and do something. Um, so thanks for having me. Um, I'm Zoe Conway and I'm going to be helping you a little bit with Irish fiddle. Um, I play traditional music and tour all around the world and uh, absolutely love it. Um, I've also studied classical music so um, I have a little bit of information, you know, kind of coming from your world, I suppose, which might help you to get into the world of Irish traditional music. And I suppose some of the tips and techniques you'll learn in Irish music will hopefully help your classical playing as well. Um, so I'm gonna start off just by playing a couple of tunes, first of all, um, just to show you my style and the way I like to play. And I'm gonna play two jigs, which were composed by a brilliant uh, composer in Ireland called Charlie Lennon. Um, he's from Galway in the west of Ireland. Uh, the first tune is called The Smiling Bride and the second one is The Handsome Young Maidens. Um, so two jigs and then I'm gonna jump straight into a reel and you'll hear the time change there when I jump into the final tune, which is called The Boys of Malin. And that's a traditional tune from Donegal, from the very north of Ireland. So a bit of a broad start for you all. Hope you enjoy it. Right, 
so nice lively start um, with the jig and a couple of reels. And throughout the course of the workshop, I'll be showing you some of those things that I would have done in, that, in those tunes. Um, so rolls and cuts and chords and maybe slides up to the notes and bow triplets and lots of different techniques to kind of embellish the tunes and to dress them up. Because of course, Irish traditional music, um, some of the tunes are very, very simple um, and they're very short melodies and they're very repetitive. Um, so we need to kind of embellish them as much as we can and maybe put our own stamp on them as well. Um, another thing that I love to do is kind of cross rhythm with the bow, which I'm sure you would have heard there, um, which is quite different to, uh, to classical music. So that's one of the key ways to kind of give that authentic sound when you're playing Irish traditional music. Because of course, if I printed off any of these notes and sent them over to you, you'd be able to play it in one minute. Um, but it might not necessarily sound very authentic. So by doing those kind of cross rhythms and um, bringing your slurs across the bar and things like that, you can actually give it that swing that makes it sound kind of Irishy. So I'll be working on, on lots of different things like that. Um, I know that this is the, the last day of your master classes in the international master course, um, and I hope you still have some energy left for this. Um, I love the fiddle, I love my fiddle. I'm actually playing a Max Muller violin, which some of you may have heard of from Amsterdam. Um, this violin is absolutely amazing. It's brilliant for um, traditional, which is what I play it mostly for, um, but also for classical. It's a really great all-rounder. Um, it was made in 1933, and I play a Noel Burke bow, which I know some of you will probably have heard of and would love one of his bows. They're really some of the finest bows in the world. He's absolutely amazing. Um, and I got this because I really like to have great control with the bow. Um, I love to be able to play, we play a lot of slow airs in Irish music, um, to be able to have that real lovely balance across the whole bow is really lovely for me. Um, and also this is quite a lively bow, so it has a lot of bounce, which is great for Irish music as well. Um, and I wanted just to tell you quickly about the strings that I use. Um, not so much used in classical music, but brilliant for Irish because they're really fast. They have a very quick response. So a lot of the issues I have with classical strings is that um, you play them and the sound goes down and then comes out. But we don't have time for that in Irish. It, we need a little bit of a uh, bite. So these have that without being too brash. Um, they're Daddario Helicor violin strings. I'll say that again, Dario Helicor violin strings. Um, that's the set there. Um, and I also use uh, the Kaplan, Dario Kaplan E string, which I really love. It's called a non-whistling E, um, and it really does the job that it says it does, and it's not too brash as well. So that's a lovely um, set of strings, and that helps me to get the sound that I have. Um, so I'm going to start by showing you some of those ornamentations that I was talking about earlier. And the main ones that we use are rolls in Irish music. So if we have a space at all, um, we like to try and fill it with lots of notes. Um, so if we have a long note in there, we're going to put in a little embellishment, a bit like a turn, I suppose, in classical music. So let me just show you those first of all. We're going to start with an E roll. So that's my uh, first finger on the D string. If you want to get your fiddles ready, guys, we can just play in real time. I can't actually see any of you, and I can't see your comments at the minute. And um, so if you have any questions or anything, feel free to send them on, and I'll get back to you after the class. But let's just pretend you're all here, and you all have your fiddles in your hands, and we're all going to play together. So I'm going to start with first finger on the D string, and I'm going to play an E roll, which sounds like this. <laughs> So what I'm playing there is E, G, E, D, E. And I'm bringing out the first note a little bit longer. So let's just do a few of those, maybe 10. And a bit faster. Great. And just a kind of note I know from teaching before where people have issues, sometimes when you're lifting off that first finger to hear the D, 
we really need to hear that D underneath. Make sure that you have a proper release on that first finger up and down again. Um, so just have a listen out for that. Make sure you're doing it well. And the other thing is that I like to try and support the weight of the fiddle with my head and shoulder here. I'm using a wolf shoulder rest, very standard rest, but I love it, um, with the two screws on both sides here, so it's very adjustable. And it just means that I can keep the balance quite much in my head and shoulders, and it also means that my fingers are very light and fast. So that's really important, obviously in any music, but definitely in Irish, because you really do need to have swift movements in your fingers. Um, I would recommend having a look at um, Subramanian, in, an, an Indian violinist. Um, he holds it in his, uh, he sits cross-legged um, on the floor, and he actually holds the violin in the foot of his, on the ball of his foot. So he's not actually holding the weight of the violin here at all um, with his hand, and he's really unbelievably fast and accurate, incredible. So definitely check him out. But that's because uh, he's not actually holding the weight with the arm and he's got so much freedom. So um, really, if you can try and keep that up here um, as, as gently as possible, obviously, as relaxed as possible, with the two shoulders down as much as possible, and then that gives you that freedom to hear all those notes in the roll. So E roll one more time. <laughs> Brilliant. And then we do the F sharp roll. So we're going to do F sharp, G, F sharp, E, F sharp. Okay, on the D string. And a little faster. And then we're going to the G roll, so that's using our fourth finger A. And if you can, you're going to keep the A really nicely in tune because that gives it that kind of, um, you know, projection and resonance. So it's one of the problems we have in Irish music that a lot of people play their little fingers too low and it doesn't have the same impact at all. So try and get that A really up nice and high, not too high, just exactly right. So I'm doing G, A, G, F sharp, G. I'm keeping the F sharp finger down here. Brilliant. And the last one I'm going to show you is the open, um, the open finger roll, which is D, E, G, E, D. So you can use that for any string, obviously, just the open finger roll, D, E, G, E, D, or open one, three, one, open. So let's try a few of those. actually my favourite role because it has a lovely fluttery sound and it really fits in well in jigs and reels, um, our two most common type of tune. Um, so I'm going to start by teaching you guys a set dance. Um, these are typically for dancing to, the same as the jigs and the reels and the mazurkas and everything else, um, but we don't have any dancers today. Um, the difference about the set dance is they're a little bit slower than your jigs and your reels, and they also have a very unusual length. So it's not quite square, the first part and the second part, like a lot of the traditional tunes we have, and um, not so even. Um, which I think is really charming. But this is a beautiful tune. Um, I've try tried to pick a range of tunes, a range of styles, a range of keys as well. Um, so this one is just lovely. I'll play it for you first a couple of times to give you a chance to hear the tune. And then I'm going to teach you by ear, which you may not have done before, but um, just go with it and it'll be totally fine. Um, so nobody can hear you anyway, so <laughs> you're safe enough. <laughs> this is called An Shushin Bon which means the little white blanket. Thank you. 
Okay, so really nice tune, um, quite repetitive, as I mentioned before. So the ending of the first part is identical to the ending of the second part, which obviously makes it a lot easier to learn. So um, the reason so many of our tunes are so repetitive is because obviously it was learned by ear, so it just makes it easier to pick them up um, when you hear them like that. Um, we're going to use some of the rules that I showed you just earlier, like the D roll, I think, let me just see, is it a D roll? Yeah. So the same as a G, what we did on the D string, third finger. It's identical to that, but it's starting with the high D on the A string. So we'll be bringing that in, as well as some chords and cuts as well, which I'm sure you'll find easy enough. Um, so this is a lovely one in the key of A major. So let's just try that first phrase a few times. Just have a listen. And listen again. And just try it with me. One, two, three. In Irish music, we, of course, have free bowing. In other words, we don't have a clue what we're doing <laughs> with our bows. And we're just making it up as we go along. But so far, I think I've done the same thing there in that first phrase. It doesn't mean that that's what you have to do. You can do whatever you want, um, whatever you think sounds nice. You can separate those first few notes, which I would have done in the original recording. And added in a chord there at the end. Low A, first finger, and an F. So if you want to try that change, you can do down bow to begin. And then I slur the last of the triplets. One, two, three, slur. And then I do F cut F, F, G, F. And then that brings me to a down bow for that kind of main note, which is very nice. Um, have a listen again. So you have a few options there in terms of bowings. One, two, three. telling you earlier about slurring over the beat and trying to use your bow for a lot of this um, underlying rhythms, the, really, the real beauty of Irish music. And that's exactly what we're doing there. We're doing triplet, one, two, three, and then we're slurring into the next beat. So you wouldn't really get that in classical music. That would be very confusing. Um, but in Irish music, it sounds brilliant. Um, okay, so the next phrase. Bringing in our D roll at the end, A, F, E. And try that with me a couple of times. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Very important that we keep the roll in one bow. So we won't be separating that. We won't do this because that won't sound as authentically Irish. So we keep that always in one bow. Um, okay, so, so far we have... Try it with me. One, two, three. One more time. One, two, three. Then we have, so B, C sharp, B, A, F, E, and all together, and again, and we're going over to the low C sharp, and then a triplet with E, F, A. Try that with me. One, two. 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 One,
two. Then we have B. B, B, C sharp, B. So if I just play that phrase all on its own. Sometimes I'll add in an E there. As a wee chord. Let's try that. And the very last phrase. again and try that with me ABC so a lot of the same notes in that last phrase as the second last phrase ABC again Finishing with an E and an A chord there. One, two, three. And again. And you'll see when you go back and look at the original tune when I played it, I put a cut in there at that point. really being very gentle with the third finger there and just playing A, D, A kind of thing. In one bow. And that's the whole first part. So in Irish music, we'd normally repeat that then. So first part twice, and then we go into the second part, and we play the whole second part twice, and then we go back to the first part, we play the whole first part twice, and so on. And you play the entire piece three or four times easily. In, an, in a session, you might play it seven or eight. Um, and that's just the way. And each time you try and build up your embellishments and your chords and change up the bowing and things like that. And it also gives other people in the session a chance to learn the tune because they've heard it a few times. So it's a bit like that joke. If you were you know, going to such in a place, you wouldn't start from here. Um, well, it's the same for this. You wouldn't really learn this until you know it inside your head, you know? So definitely listening is key in Irish music. You've got to kind of have the tune inside your head and then it's very easy to play it after that. Where you're starting from, you've never heard it before and you're just jumping in in the deep end. It's a lot more difficult. So go easy on yourself and take your time, come back later and listen to it and then it'll be much, much easier. So we're gonna jump into the second part, okay? It starts with A, C sharp, high E. Triplet, then an F, F, cut F, E, F. So I'm using my third finger again to cut with the first finger. From the A, C, E, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Then we have a high A. And do the D roll there. So high A, F, E, C sharp A, B, C, D roll. High A again, F, E, C sharp A, B, C, D roll. And try that with me. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Very good. One, two, three. And that's pretty much it. The rest is what you've already learned. And then you go back to the second part and repeat that. One, two, three. And then high A. D row into the end. So it's as simple as.
does that. Really very easy, repeated. L most of the notes are repeated there in that second part. Um, but a very, very beautiful tune. So let's just try the second part a few times. A, C, E, F. One, two, three. So a couple of things to show you now that you kind of have um, the way of the tune. I'm going to put in this little kind of short roll in that space. So you remember I said if we have a note that's kind of long, we like to embellish it. But this isn't long enough for a full roll. We have to kind of make it very fast and very short. So let me just show you what I mean. Here we're going to go straight to the top note, which is A, F, E, F. Just four notes. So just try that for me, A, F, E, F. And again. And a bit faster. And again, don't forget that you need to keep the weight nice and high on the fiddle so that your hand is nice and free and you can get that release on the first finger. You can practice that as much as you want. And now we're going to add that together. So have a listen. Try that with me. And again. And two more. One more. So that's something that I really love, those short, no short rolls that you can fit into little miniature spaces. Um, they're super fast, but they're really beautiful. Um, so that's a nice one to do there. And then also you probably noticed I did a cut in between um, the second phrase and the third phrase, our two final phrases. Um, and I slurred the bow across there. So as I was saying before, we, we're always trying to you know, blend the main downbeats very not like classical music where you're trying to always bring out your downbeats of your beginning of the bar. In Irish music, you're trying to kind of hide them a little bit and bring out other beats in other places, little surprises here and there to dress up the tune. So let's just see what I'm talking about. You can actually add in a chord there, which is really nice. For free, totally for free. kind of drawn out bow there across that phrase. So have a listen. I'm doing two and two, B, C, B, A, F, E. And before that, I'm doing a cut with my third finger. Listen. a lovely kind of a lazy swing sound which is brilliant for Irish music so just try that with me from the chord with the B and the E finger I changed my bowing sorry and one more time into the whole second part. So starting from here. And one, two, three.
of little embellishments there that you can do um, to make that sound beautiful. Um, we've got a reel next. This reel is called Sporting Paddy. Um, it's very well known. I wonder if some of you might already know it, um, but maybe not if you're not learning Irish music, but it's very common in sessions. So this is a good one to start if you're ever in a session because it means everyone will join in and you won't be left playing on your own. Um, sporting Paddy, a reel. So the piece we just did there, set dance, is kind of unusual. There aren't that many set dances and it's very uh, specifically for dancing too. Uh, the reel is more, you know, you can just play it in any environment. Um, and this would be, let's say, in 4-4, four, four, and this one incorporates some bow triplets, so I wanted to try and include something with that. Um, it's also in uh, a mode, I don't know the name of the mode, I'm sure you might, um, but it's what we would call um, A minor, um, and I love the minor tunes in traditional music, I think they're really cool. Um, so I'm going to play this tune for you just so you get a chance to listen. So this isn't an opportunity to take notes and write stuff down and try and figure out anything. Just ignore it. Just listen to the tune and allow your head to kind of sink it in a little bit. Um, I'll play it a few times around so you get a chance to hear it before we start learning. So Sporting Paddy. <laughs> So, super cool tune, I love it. Um, and play it at concerts, even though it's very simple, it's very straightforward. Um, so this is a really good example of a reel because every phrase is the same length and the first part is repeated and the second part is repeated. So most reels have two parts. Um, you can, of course, have four or five parts in a reel, but n most of them would have two or three. Um, and anything else about this? Oh yes, the bow triplet. Let's have a look at the bow triplet. <laughs> When I'm doing my bow trivet, it's three A's basically. I like to have a little bit of that bite from the bow in there, especially on the first of the three triplets. That was too much, but you know what I mean. A little bit of heaviness is really nice. In general, I'm looking for a really beautiful, clean, clear sound, um, so not rough. Um, a lot of traditional players play with a very rough sound and they have a lot of rosin on their fiddle, which really helps that um, kind of very textured playing. Just personally, I prefer it to be really nice and clean, so it depends what you want. Um, but for me, I try and keep the fiddle very clean so that I have a really clean sound. And uh, the bow as well, minimal rosin on the bow. But here, we do like to have a little bit of edge. And sometimes in chords as well. I like a little bit of bite. So it just depends what you're looking for. But let's just try the triplet. Um, as you can see, I'm really nearly in the middle, a little bit lower than middle of the bow. And I don't need to put much pressure on at all because my fiddle is doing that already. My natural hold. So I'm just doing it down, up, down. And we're gonna add in the E and the A before. Down bow E, up bow A, 
that brings me to the right spot and then I can do my triplet, okay? Let's try that together. Three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Good. Very relaxed full hand. Three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Good. So my classical kind of bow hold is really helping here. Um, to get speed there and to have control and power with very little effort, I suppose. So use that. You don't need much force at all. Just let it nice and uh, kind of hang there nice and easily. Now, I normally, I think... Yeah. When I do a bow triplet, so I'm doing my three notes, the last of the three, I slur into the next note. So we've done that already in the last tune, um, I'm sure you've noticed. Um, but I do that in the faster tunes as well, the jigs, the reels, everywhere. I always, the third note, not always, but like 95% of the time, the third note of the triplet, I'm gonna slur right into the next downbeat, and that's gonna be my down bow as well. Um, so again, I'm kind of blurring that beat line, which I really like. So that's the first phrase. Just listen again. And let's try that together. Three, four. So the extra notes are G, A, B, G. Let's try that again. Three, four. slurring on an up bow right now. And again. Good, so from the very beginning. Three, four. Then I do an F E D. So that phrase has changed the third phrase going up to a high D at the end. And our link was F-E-D. You're all panicking now, it's getting very complicated. F-E-D, down bow slur, and slur into the E. Then up bow A, triplet, slur. That's it, it's very simple once you get that. F-E-D, E in one bow. Let's try that again. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So far, so good. Then we have open E. Let's try that again. And same again, high E. And again. And again. Another little thing to say is, um, Again, with the bowing, we we're always trying to change it up to make it sound different, but we very often don't do like even bows. So there was in the last tune, I did a two and a two and a two, and then I left it after that. I would do another two and two and two anywhere else in the tune. And in this one, I've got a three plus a one, which is very common. So you're, you're never looking for a four and a four and a four and a four, or a three and a three and a three and a three. You're trying to do a two and a one and a three and a one and a four and a two and a one and a three. You know, it's all different. So the more you can mix up your bowings, um, the better. So I'm talking about downs and ups. So I'm talking about three on a down and one up or uh, three separated and then 
the last one slurred with the first one of the next four, and so on. So whatever way you can make it complicated, it'll sound good in Irish music. Um, so good to know that as well. Um, we've nearly got the whole first part learned, believe it or not. the last phrase so let's try that again E D G three four and two more and again and that's bringing us back to the start if you're here in real life I'd be asking you now okay who remembers how the start of the tune goes and you'd all be dying but uh, I can't do that because you're not really here. So you're very lucky. Let me just play the first part so you can hear how all the phrases come together. Just have a listen. Okay, let's try it all together. So E, A, A, three, four. Okay, um, and I'm not moving too quickly. It's very hard to tell, obviously, <laughs> what standard you're at or anything else, but I um, hope that it's okay. You probably noticed I fitted in one of those tiny little rolls that I was talking about, um, which is a four note roll, not the full five notes that we're used to. Um, so let me just show you how to fit that in. <laughs> So for my students, I would normally say, you take your ordinary rule, which would be G, A, G, F sharp, G, and you're gonna drop the first note, jump straight to the second. So that just leaves A, G, F, G, fiddly dum, fiddly dum, okay? And we're going to go from the F sharp here. But we're using the one bow, F, A, G, F, G. And this is a super fast roll. So if you're finding it tricky, don't worry. You just need to practice it a few times to get, to get the speed up. And again, keep the lightness in the left hand. And then you should be able to manage it. And don't forget to keep the tuning there with that A and the G. Nice gap between those. And very close together, F sharp and G. That really helps to make it um, sound good and have that kind of projection that I'm looking for. So in the phrase, it will sound like this. <laughs> together again again and you probably notice that I'm putting an accent on the second beat there one and two da, 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 four and one and two da, and that is very common in Irish music. So that's our kind of backbeat that we love. And uh, my little boy studies classical piano and his teacher is driven mad because he keeps accentuating the second beat, which doesn't sound as good in classical music, but he can't help it. <laughs> so you can see 
the underlying beats there that I'm kind of trying to bring out. Um, so let's try the whole first part now that we have that short roll in place. Um, so it starts with E, A, 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 G, A, B, G. Three, four. For the second time, we're leading up into the second bar. So, first time we go down to bring us back to the first part. So, it kind of depends where we are, what the ending is. A bit like a first time bar and a second time bar. So, let's try that again, and this time we'll add in the short roll. Three, four. One more time, three, four. Okay, and like one of the most important things in Irish music is ornamentation, variation, embellishments, all of that kind of thing, but also melodic variation. So we get away with a lot in Irish music. Um, you could practically rewrite the tune and you'd still be playing the tune. So don't be afraid to change the notes and don't stick to the notes that I've just given you. You're allowed to go like add in your own passing notes as long as you'd get back to the melody at some stage and keep it going. It's really very free and it's supposed to be like that. So if you just play exactly what I just showed you, you would have failed really in Irish music. You need to kind of put your own ideas in there as well. So you'll hear when you go back to listen to the tune that I played originally, that I tried to change it around the melody quite a lot and add in little things. So I'm gonna just show you some of those, which you can of course add in, but you can think of your own too. Run there. And when I do that, when I have a double triplet, same as in classical, I'm trying to make them quite punchy, so I'm doing a quite kind of a heavy down bow on the first one, and then a heavy up bow on the next one. And I'm also making them kind of broad so that they really stick out. They're a little bit slower than they should be in a way. And um, that I think is really nice. That makes them quite obvious. So you can totally do that kind of thing in Irish music. Um, other ideas would be, let's say, I'm play playing my chord there. around with the melody and sticking in random notes here and there and different passing notes and different long notes now and again as well. So feel free to do any of that once you get the tune in your head and you've kind of mastered it. Um, let's just try the second part now. So we've got an E triplet but that's dead easy. Don't forget to slur the last of the three triplets with the next note, which happens to be G natural here. And again, you don't have to do that either, but that's just what I do. Okay, so let's just try that whole first phrase. One, two, three. Again, one, two, three. One, two, three. Last one, one, two, three. And I'm just hitting off the A there. 
I'm not keeping it, that'll be a bit heavy, I think. So I'm just touching off that open A for the nice chord sound. Then we're going up to the high B. Let's try that from the high B. And again. One more time. Then I repeat the G, E, D, G, E, D a couple of times. With different accents. And again. Too fast there. One, two, three. And again, just hitting off that low D. And now we're going to do the first phrase and the second phrase again there of that second part. So just have a listen. Let's try that together. First two phrases. One, two, three. And one more time. One, two, three. Okay, on to the third phrase. Listen to that again. We got a cut in there and a nice slur. G A G. people especially like foreigners who are learning Irish music and really love Irish music when they get into it at the very beginning they often do the cut too early and that gives it a real like inauthentic sound if that's not even a word but you know what I mean um, be careful that you leave the cut quite late so I wouldn't do this for example that just sounds awful to me I would leave it as late as possible just gives it a much more invisible sound and a much better swing and here's the early version again it's totally different so try and keep those cuts quite late um, so we're on the third phrase just have a listen and again just touching off that open A one two three will have noticed I did a little cut there. A G. Let's try that. One, two, three. Last one. One, two, three. And then we've got that repeated G E D motif. B A G. bringing us all the way down into the first part again. So just listen to how the last phrase fits into the first. Listen again. Okay, and 
Let's try it together. The last phrase from the GAB. One, two, three. One more time. One, two, three. I'm going to try the whole tune, but nice and slowly. Um, I don't expect you to actually have it at this stage yet, but give it a go anyway. Um, that's the very beginning. One, two, three, four. Finishing with an E and an A chord there. It would be nice to bring in that high C as, a, as an ornament, would be lovely. In Irish music, we normally just play in the first position. We don't really go up the fiddle, although I do in some tunes, but not very often. But I will try and just put in a high C now and again because I think it's gorgeous, or even an, an E harmonic now and again, uh, depending on the tune, is lovely as well. So now you have two tunes done. Um, hope you're getting on okay there. Is everyone getting on okay? Any messages back there? Yay, they're loving it. <laughs> um, I sent an email with some resources in it. So you'll get that uh, probably by the end of today or tomorrow over the next couple of days anyway. And in there I put some links to some of my favorite fiddle players in Irish music. So take, a, take time to have a look at those because they're really unbelievably good. I mean just incredible. Um, there's Tommy Peoples in there and James Kelly, uh, Creevin O'Reilly, Magdara O'Reilly, no relation, but they're both brilliant fiddle players. Um, Breege Harper, I mean, there's a whole host of amazing players. Um, and you know, you can just learn so much from everyone. And in Irish music, I mean, the most important thing is to learn as many tunes as you can. Um, so you're talking, you know, a couple of thousand, um, if not more. Um, so you're starting to build that up slowly and slowly. So you've got, let's say, three today. You could do three tomorrow. You could do five the next day. You get much quicker at learning tunes and you get to the point where you learned a tune just by hearing it. You've already learned it um, and you're able to play it. So you're probably at that stage um, because you already have such a knowledge of your instrument. So um, if it is something that you like, um, don't be afraid to do it. I've, I've met people from all over the world who suddenly decided to take up Irish music and they're amazing. I mean amazing players with a, an incredible store of music. Um, and there's something really um, rewarding about playing Irish music um, and having all that music inside your head, not needing the sheet music. Um, and being able to interpret it the way that you want and add in those notes that you want and play it at the speed that you want. And um, it's quite liberating. I really, it's, a, it's quite amazing. And I've met quite a lot of classical musicians who have come to Irish music and um, have this huge respect for Irish music and for the brilliant um, culture that we have here and the heritage that we have. It's quite incredible. And as well, the, the, the power of the brain. I mean, the fact that a human being can actually retain all of that information is astounding. I mean, it really is. And these people are not necessarily musicians. They're not necessarily fiddle players. Um, they could be farmers, they could be fishermen, <laughs> you know, and they have this unbelievable knowledge, which is just incredible. And the place where, as you learn by ear, 
um, it's one part of the brain that it's stored in. And if you learn from sheet, it's a different part of the brain that lights up. So they're not connected, they're actually quite different. And it's not to say that one's better than the other, but the one that you learn by ear, um, actually you retain it as a long-term memory. The one that you learn on a sheet, you really don't. You have to work very hard to get that to become a long-term memory. Um, so it's a different way of learning. It's absolutely different even to the, to the brain, um, but it's something that stays with you for life. So I'm sure you've all heard the stories of the people who might have a stroke um, and they may have lost um, their language. They may have lost their ability to identify people, but they can still sing the songs that they learned when they were a child. Um, and that's absolutely true. It's a very, very strong memory. And if you've never used it, you won't appreciate it. But once you awaken it and begin to use it and start to retain this information, it's literally endless. I mean, you could just learn 50 tunes a day and keep going forever, it seems, you know, and actually retain it. So it's really worth doing if it's something that you are interested in. It's incredible, in my opinion, Irish music. I mean, my sister is a fiddle player. She's not professional like me, um, but she can play in a session and she could literally play for probably three or four weeks without repeating a tune and without needing recall, without needing a note to tell her how the tune goes like I have here. Um, she can just play and play and play and play and play and never come to an end. It's just unbelievable. Um, when you're not in the world, it's unbelievable, you know, so I can appreciate it because I've kind of lived in both classical and traditional worlds. Um, I have one more tune, if you have the energy. Um, this is a gorgeous slip jig, and it's one of the newer pieces that we have in our tradition. It was co-written between Donal Lunny and Bill Whelan. It's a brilliant piece. It's part of a, an old, a bigger piece called Time Dance, um, but the actual tune, the slip jig itself, is called the Ballymun Regatta, um, and it's a really cool um, slip jig, which would be 9-8 uh, time signature. Um, I have sent you some notes in this email as well. Um, so these are letters, A, B, Cs, which is how we write Irish music quite a lot. Um, the reason for that is not that people are opposed to reading um, the manuscript, which obviously a lot of Irish musicians do very well. Um, it's more to do with the fact that you can see the structure of the tune really fast in the letters. If you have a quick look on the email, you'll see that. Um, you can see where the parts repeat very easily. You can see which lines repeat very easily. Um, and also there's no rhythm written down there, so you've got to hear the rhythm to be able to play it, um, which is quite different to learning music from manuscript where the rhythm is imprinted on the sheet. And that rhythm is not the rhythm that we really play in Irish music, so it's misleading you, if you see what I mean. It's kind of sending you off into a more square uh, direction. Um, so. I would really recommend not looking at the music at all, not looking at the sheets at all, but if you do need to, if you need to have a recall or you'd like to print it out just to have it in a file, it's there for you to do that. Um, I've sent you a little fiddle grid as well, which just shows you how to read those letters on the fiddle. So we've got low notes, which have a low tick, G, A, B, C. It's very simple. I mean, you're going to get it in five minutes. Um, and then we've got high notes on the E string, high E, high F, high G, high B, and so on. Um, and the only one that's different is the high D, which is on the A string, um, just to differentiate between the open D and the high D. Um, so it won't take you long to figure all that out. And a few other little kind of quirky things that we use in Irish music, like a pause mark is not a pause mark, it's actually a roll, the rolls that we did, you'll see that as well. So you can figure all that out in your own time and that'll keep you going for probably a couple of months, I would say. Um, but the last piece, one of my favourites, it's called Time Dance. I've actually sent you the manuscript of this because I just had it. I thought it might be handy. But you'll see straight away that the rhythm I'm using is not the rhythm on the sheet. Um, it's quite a bit different. And then, of course, we're going to add in our rolls and our cuts and our unusual bowing as well, which will help to give it that swing of Irish traditional music. So I'll just play you the tune a couple of times to give you a chance to hear it. Thank you. 
super tune. I love it, and I've been lucky enough to play that with Oxtra many times, and it's just phenomenal. So if you get a chance to look it up, you'll hear it with um, Oxtra Time Dance. Um, and some wonderful players as well, Liam O'Flynn recorded on it, and uh, Planksty, um, absolutely brilliant. Um, okay, we'll get started. It starts with a double B roll. So we've learned our roll, we've learned our short roll, which is four notes, and now we have an extended roll, which I call a double roll, which is seven notes. And again, we're going to try and get those all in in one bow. So that is B, D, B, A, B, D, B. So we're doing a roll and a cut kind of thing at the end. Just try that with me. And a bit faster. Great. So we've got. Listen again. That's a B double roll. A F. A sharp A. F sharp E. So try that. Three, four. And again. more complex than the other tunes that we've learned, um, mainly because of the time signature, which is 9-8. Uh, it's not very common, so it's a little bit more tricky to get your head around. Second phrase. Listen to that again. So that's just A, B, D, B, A at the end of the double B roll. Try that with me. Three, four. And again. And again. Again. Okay, so first phrase and second phrase, just have a listen. That was a bit fast, but let's try it together. One, two, and it's quite tricky for bowing. One, two, three. And one more time. One, two, three. And then the next bit is the same as the first. And then we have an E roll. So the E roll I showed you earlier, but you've probably forgotten. It's E, F, A, F, E. So just try that. So you have it again, and then we do an extra cut at the end. So this is an extended roll again, and our cut is going to be with the third finger, which is your high A. Followed by D, B, A, D, sorry, D, B, A, B, D. E roll. That's the last phrase of the first part. So let's just try that again. E roll. One, two, three. And again. One more. Okay, and that's the whole first part. So we'll put all those little phrases together. First phrase and third phrase are identical. Just have a listen first. OK, 
Okay, let's try it together a little bit slower than that. One, two, three. And you can change it up so you don't have to do the extended roll every single time. You can do the long note and do the double roll second time or whatever. So definitely I would change it up. You'll probably hear that in the recording. Um, but that's basically the whole first part. And then into the second part. So again, we're in 9 8. So we've got three groups of three E, F, G. E, D, E, F, G. Let's try that together. One, two, three. And again. And again. Um, and as I told you before, we're trying to mix up the bowings as we go along. So we're three groups of three, but I definitely wouldn't do three and three and three. Okay, so as you saw there, I did a one and a two and a one and a two and a two and a one. So I didn't even repeat my three little rhythms the same. So you're trying to mix it up all the time as you go along. Just watch again. Don't know what I did, but you figured it out. So let's try it together. One, two, three. Second phrase. So A, F, D, B, G, E, A, F, D. And again. Now I'm just going to add that into the first phrase. Yeah, so again, with the bow and you can do whatever you want. Three separates, one on its own, and two, and two, and one, or whatever. So just work away there and see how you get on. We'll try the first two phrases. One, two, three. Same again. One, two, three. And the next bit. So that has an extra E, D, B at the end. Let's try that together. One, two, three. Same again. And one more. Then we have. a real block of silence in the middle of that. That's a proper rest, um, a quaver rest there in the middle that we don't play anything for. So D, B, A, then A, B, D, E, F. So I'm going to play from the beginning of the second part so you can see how it all fits together. And we're halfway through the second part. So let's try that together. One, two, three. Here's the third phrase. So again, identical to the first, and then the last one is two long Bs. Now, as you can see, I'm doing a little tiny, wee tiny bit of vibrato on that B. So we can use vibrato in Irish music if we have these lovely long notes. Um, it would just be a kind of a 
restrained vibrato. We won't be too dramatic. We won't do that. It'll be a lot more understated. Just a little wobble. Let's try that. Again. Good. And then we have an extended A roll. So from the high B, have a listen. So the rhythm is quite tricky in this tune. Listen again. Okay, try that with me. Three, four. Same again. Three, four. Last one. Very good. Then we have. F, D, E, F, G, A, F, D, A, D, B. Listen again. kind of falls over the line there at the end. Um, again, probably one of the reasons I love this tune is those kind of pushy rhythms that fall all over the place. Um, listen from the high B so you can see how it fits together. And you're into the middle of the first part. Listen again. And then an extra long D there. And an extra long B. And then you're away. Okay, so very complicated, but you'll get it by ear if you listen to the original recording as much as you can. So let's try it a few times from the high B. Let's see if we can get it. One, two, three. And again, from the high B. And two more times from the high B. And the last one from the high B. and that's you back into the first part. We'll just try the whole tune. I'll just play away nice and slow and you see, can you play along? So remember it starts with the extended B roll. Okay, one, two, three.
kind of go into the first part to get the ending. And then I always dampen the string at the end. Um, so loads going on in that tune. You could see I was doing a little dub, double bow there somewhere in the second part. Um, G F E. Who's this triplet? So really great fun that piece. It'll keep you going for years. Um, I absolutely love it. So I hope you've really enjoyed the three tunes that we've gone through today. Um, don't be afraid to ask me any questions you have. I really only touched the start of what I would usually do. Um, so it's very tricky because I don't have um, questions from the floor. So I'm not quite sure what to talk about. But if you have any questions, just send an email in and they'll send it on to me and I'll reply. Um, hopefully you got a little bit out of it and you learned a little bit about my fiddle and my bow and my strings and everything else that might be able to help you as well. Um, I'd like to say thanks very much to the whole crew here in the background doing loads of work and thanks very much to the National Concert Hall as always. Um, what a pleasure it is to get out and about and uh, see other people. <laughs> um, I'm going to play a tune just to finish up um, today. This is one of my favourite pieces and I brought the other fiddle for it because it's in a different tuning. Um, those clips that I sent you of other fiddle players, you'll notice that a lot of the traditional fiddle players will tune up to E flat. We call it E flat um, instead of D. So it's a whole semitone higher because they love the sound of the fiddle when it's a little bit, um, you know, brighter. Um, but I love playing around with tunings. I won't do it on this very good fiddle, of course, um, because it's great to keep it settled. Um, but I play around with this other one. And so it's tuned to. Um, it's tuned to C sharp A E A. Or actually a whole step lower than that, a whole semitone lower than that. But I call it C sharp A E A. So I've got lovely octave, lovely uh, resonance. Um, and I'm going to play two tunes. The first one was composed by Jim McKillop, who's a brilliant fiddle maker and repairer and buyer and seller. Um, he lives just beside me in Ravensdale in County Louth. Um, and he composed it. It's called the Half Moon Waltz. And then a second tune, which is from Quebec, which is called the Hangman's Reel. One of my favourite pieces to play as a solo. So I'm just going to sign off with this. Um, thanks very much, everyone. I hope you really enjoyed it and hope to meet you all in real life someday. And best of luck with the whole week. Thank you.